Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the, today's installment of the Seneca webinar series. Today we have with us Catherine Johnston from UCT, and she will be sharing the H3A Bionet experiences in phenotype data harmonization and standards development. My name is Vera Matzer, and I'm involved in the Seneca project on behalf of Embo EBI. I'll be hosting the webinar today. I'll also man the question function at the end. So before I introduce our speaker, I would just like to make you aware that this webinar is being recorded. That includes the question and answer session at the end. And we will share the video and the slides um, afterwards on the Seneca YouTube channel and the Seneca website. We've reserved some questions at the end, um, some time for questions at the end. Now, what I'd like you to do is to write your questions into the GoToWebinar question panel. Um, you should see a picture of this. And then what we'll do is we'll go through them at the end. You can already add the questions during the webinar. I want to briefly introduce the Seneca project to you. Seneca is a four-year project, and Seneca stands for Common Infrastructure for National Cohorts in Europe, Canada, and Africa. And it receives funding from the EU Horizon 2020 project and um, the Canadian Institute for Health Research. The vision of Seneca is to accelerate disease research and improve health by facilitating transcontinental human data exchange. But the project's been broken down into several challenges. The first one is federated data discovery. If you are a researcher in a particular field, how do you find cohorts of interest? Um, this could be kind of done by genotype, by phenotype, um, or data use. The second challenge is around um, interoperable authentication and authorization. So after you've found a data you're interested in, how do you actually get permission to access it? And once you have access and you want to ask questions um, across these cohorts, there will be a need for harmonized cohort level metadata. And the ultimate aim of Seneca is to enable federated analysis, both in the research and the healthcare context. So there is a set of Seneca demonstrators um, where federated analysis being done across the cohorts in, in both the research and the clinical setting. And then on top of these challenges, there's also the fundamental need for a transnational harmonized LC framework to address the ethical, legal and societal issues. On top of this, there will be an outreach and training program to aid in the awareness and the capacity building um, in these particular areas. If you'd like to be kept informed of the progress of the Seneca project and you want to know about any future webinars or training opportunities, then we suggest you follow us on Twitter and have a look at the Seneca website. Now, today's presenter is Catherine Johnston. She's the co-chair of the H3A Bionet Health Informatics Work Package and the H3A Africa phenotype harmonization working group that focus on data harmonization efforts and building phenotype standards in the African context. She provides support to the H3 Africa consortium studies in phenotype data collection, harmonization and software platforms and the incorporation of ontologies. With a long-standing desire to play a role in advances in genetic research, Catherine moved from a position as head clinical data manager at ARTRI and joined the computational biology division at UCT as the HDA Bionet software developer. She completed an honors degree in computer science and economics and started her career working in electronic health record systems development. Now, discovering a passion for helping medical professionals in the field of patient care by building them useful electronic tools, she joined Caprice as a data, clinical data manager in 2004 and worked within German in the field of clinical data management for about 13 years. During this time, um, she got married and had three beautiful children, the first of whom has Down syndrome. And as a result, she's found um, herself unexpectedly combining her interest in genetics, health informatics, and patient care with a love for her children, advocating for inclusivity and research advancements in medical care, data collection standards, and software development to benefit all genetically diverse people in Africa. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Catherine. This is the story of Atria Bionet's phenotype harmonization experiences, um, and some of them on my own as well. In the beginning, people came from Africa and traveled east and west, spreading out into the world. There are many who remained in the African continent 
had generation upon generation of children who now, over time, hold some of the most diverse DNA in the world. The genetic variations in diversity in Africa potentially hold the answers to many migrated world population health concerns and also a key to addressing the health problems within the African continent. Today, one of the most well-funded genomic research groups in Africa is the Human Hereditary and Health in Africa Consortium, h africa generating large amounts of genetic and phenotypic data. The, the h africa Consortium has received about 170 million US dollars in funding from the NIH and Wellcome Trust. It has approximately 500 members supports 51 projects that have recruited 54,000 participants to date across the continent in 34 African countries. Supported by the HRO Bionet Pan-African Bioinformatics Network, uh, which was formed to develop bioinformatics capacity in Africa, and specifically to enable genomic data analysis by HRO Africa researchers across the continent. HRO Bionet is led by the principal investigator, Professor Nicola Mulder at the University of Cape Town, and it comprises of 28 nodes based in 17 countries, 16 in Africa, and one in the USA. Asia Africa went out and collected data in 2011. It has been collecting phenotype data, which consists of demographic, demogra demographic information, anthropometric data, and disease and health related data. Uh, it's also focused its collection on DNA and biosamples collection and generating genomic data and microbiome sequencing data. Along the way, the H Africa Consortium discovered a little way into the journey, a need to harmonize phenotype data. This arose as they looked ahead and saw the need to enable cross-project analyses. As a result, H3Africa grantees were encouraged by the newly formed Phenotype Harmonization Working Group to gather their, their phenotype data using Phoenix standardized measures. The Phenotype Harmonization Working Group worked on data standards and harmonization, developing core phenotypes to collect, creating tools around those core phenotypes, and retrospective harmonization recommendations for data. Both prospective and retrospective data harmonization had to be done. There were a uh, first round of funded projects which had already initiated phenotype data collection, and there were two options. One, decide what variables should be collected and how, and then see who had collected them, or see what everyone has already collected and identify overlap. Where there were differences, these would have to be mapped to a common variable later. For prospective data harmonization, which we refer to as data standardization, the Phenotype Harmonization Group reviewed the CRS from funded projects to identify overlap. They then developed a set of questions that they agreed to be collected uniformly across all h africa projects. The projects were encouraged to use Phoenix formatting, and many uh, first cycle projects implemented these recommendations albeit with some tweaks to Phoenix collection standards, which were not always suited to data collection in the African context. In 2017, the essential phenotypes identified by the Phenotype Harmonization Working Group were formatted into a red cap data dictionary, as Astro Bionet had identified this as an efficient and suitable clinical data collection platform to support. These formed the h africa Standard CRF, released in early 2018. The CRS, were broke, which are case report forms, were broken into sections covering the set of essential questions that all studies should collect. These covered demographics, including ethnicity and language, smoking status, alcohol, drug use, and metrics, blood pressure, urine results, kidney disease, medications, cardiovascular diseases, stroke history, diabetes, HIV, dyslipidemia, cancer, and infectious diseases such as TB, malaria, and sleeping disease. The standard CRF was distributed as the new h africa funding round kicked in and made available on the h Bionic website in the form of a easy-to-set-up RedCap XML file 
which helped projects to be able to set up with a foundational database for data collection, a corresponding red cap data dictionary for studies who were using alternate platforms for data collection, paper-based case report forms, and supporting serious data, data collection guidelines to standardize the method by which phenotype data was collected. As much of the data was collected manually and still is on paper, the case report forms were needed by projects who wanted to collect uh, their data using paper-based forms. The H3 Africa Standard Series is being expanded with additional standardized modules. We are currently working on this, um, and along with our standard course phenotypes, which consist of adult data collected phenotypes, we have been building a pediatric core phenotypes module. And within our joint phenotype harmonization project, we have been working on modules to address overlap in H3 Africa data collection where projects were collecting similar heterogeneous phenotype data in specialized fields. These, these modules cover, cover study metadata, kidney disease, stroke, HIV, infectious diseases, mental health, lifestyle, cancer, rare diseases, sickle cell disease, uh, and cardiovascular health. Uh, all the above modules have been completed uh, and at present are under review by the Phenotype Harmonization Working Group. The Family History Outstanding module is being aligned with the GA4GH Family Pedigree Workstream and following closely their activities in the standards development. In order to develop the modules, uh, the standardized approach was applied. First, H3 Africa series were collected. Then these were examined and looked at to determine variables of interest based on overlap in the specialized field. These were then mapped and compared to variables in FENIC standards and reviewed and adjusted using international standards. The variables have also been mapped to ontology IDs and completed on a spreadsheet that would be used in a red cap data dictionary development. They are currently undergoing internal review and will after that be sent out for external review, whereupon we expect to write guidelines for the developed tools and include them in the standard series project. This is um, an example, a snapshot of how our collaborative walkthroughs have been carried out by each module development team, just showing how you can see that people identified which variables should be put there, uh, what sections they should go under, and mapping the ontologies and formatting the questions. This process, of course, includes um, ontology mapping on phenotype data elements. In order to make the developed standards more fair, readable and looking downstream, data harmonization of project, project, across projects uh, will be much easier if we do this. We've also been identifying fair terminology, fire terminology, and currently are mapping not just phenotype data, but also participant consent and biobank and omics data to ontologies. We found a gap in African data where it was difficult to harmonize ethnicities and language. And to this end, we have been working on building an African ethnolinguistic ontology to code collected ethnolinguistic tribal affiliations for all of our project participants. The other harmonization experience we have gathered has been for retrospective phenotype data harmonization. From this, for this experience, we have worked closely with the H3 Africa Cardiovascular Disease Working Group. Six studies were motivated to share and merge phenotype and genome data for meta-analysis of CVD-related traits. Investigating genomic and environmental determinants and influences on cardiovascular diseases among sub-Saharan Africans to get a continent-wide perspective. They wish to increase their power of discovery, validation, and replication, and address cross-cutting research questions in order to have a hoped for significant influence on healthcare. We work together with the six CBD project, project to propose and populate the Harmonized Chair resource. A paper was put out in 2018 to this effect. In this project, you can see that there were six uh, separate research projects 
Um, altogether, they had a sample size of about 54,000 participants. Um, and they were all collecting data in demographics, uh, anthropometrics, heart, heart, weight, and blood pressure measurements, exposures to tobacco, alcohol, and other infectious diseases, um, blood, urine, and other markers, and genetic data. The harmonized phenotype variables were identified in the process um, by two people who were employed by the CBD working group. They were hired, Onoja Akpa and Felix Maid, to, to cross-check all six study series used for phenotype data collection. They used these to identify overlapping variables, not just CBD related, and build an algorithm proposing how each study should transform the collected data uh, into a harmonized phenotype. Here you can see a list of the phenotype variables that were identified um, as ones that they were going to um, transform their data to across all six studies. And this is an example of how they were applying algorithms for each study. Each study being different um, had to have a different um, algorithm to indicate how to map the answers in the data values in their databases to the harmonized variables. I've just selected one of the variables, which was education level. And you can see from the two studies listed here that they had slightly different uh, questions um, to identify what the highest level of education was. And they had separate responses that were different. The new variable was identified as education status and had um, four different options, um, no education, primary, secondary, and tertiary education. And each project needed to be mapped um, separately to indicate which values in the study data should be transformed to the new educational status harmonized variable. The following steps were taken to harmonize collected data. Um, during this past year, we held a CBD data harmonization workshop um, to implement the steps, as it had taken some time awaiting ethics approval before we could move forward with this process. Studies that had completed data collection and had cleaned their data were then able to upload their data into the harmonized database that had been designed. The first step was to map the data using study data dictionaries to indicate variable names and map these to the harmonized study variables in the chair resource. The next step was to transform the actual study data to be transformed into what would be the harmonized data variables. And we did this by using the mapping file and importing it along with the data and the harmonization data dictionary into a Python script um, to output a CSV file for an, a red cap upload. The next challenge was to upload the data into REDCap. As there were rather large data sets to be uploaded, uh, we had some uh, initial challenges, just uploading huge chunks of data into REDCap, but we managed to achieve this with some modifications to our infrastructure. And the following, and, and not final, but next step that we are currently on is to run sanity checks and validation scripts, confirming that the mappings and data transformations were correctly applied. So when it came to the mapping of the data, this was an unavoidable and rather painful mapping process. We were very much made aware that having machine-readable metadata attached to the phenotypes would have been a great benefit. And it highlighted the benefits of incorporating fair data principles into databases that are developed and informed our standardization development team activities on to how to proceed. On the screen, you can see the code book at the top, which was belonging to the original study data. Uh, in the middle, in yellow, you can see the red cap uh, data dictionary that's containing the coding for the harmonized variable. And in the last one, you can see the new formatted text to pass into the transformation script. This script was developed um, during the process of the, the workshop as we worked closely with the studies uh, in a face-to-face -face workshop. 
it was much easier to have all the studies united in one room to discuss the problems and, and potential changes that needed to made to the harmonization database. It would not have been a process that was possible to do remotely. So the script that was developed takes the mapping file, the harmonized data dictionary, and the phenotype data, and transforms it automatically to harmonized data values. Sorry. After the workshop, only two studies were ready to upload. Two are soon to follow suit. It was exciting for PIs to see the combined phenotype data and immediately kindled their imagination for further data analysis and research questions to tackle. We are currently testing and validating this uploaded data and refining the transformation script available, which is on the HRBionet GitHub repository. In total, we had 18,000 participants harmonized phenotype data added to the chair resource, um, and we anticipate that we will soon have all 54,000 participant data in there. So along the road to the phenotype data harmonization, many challenges were met. And I have listed these, and I'm happy to receive questions on these. Um, but these are some of the challenges that we encountered. In terms of retrospective data harmonization, first we needed to look whether participant consent forms covered meta-analysis and what data use ontology codes could be applied. It was difficult to know if fragmented ROVs and institutions in different countries would agree to our harmonization efforts. There were questions about where the data would be curated and harmonized data would reside. An IRB approval for the harmonization database had to be obtained. Diverse or lacking data governance policies in different, different African countries created uncertainty. Tribal politics and minority populations had concerns about data sharing and access that minimized data that was allowed to be harmonized. Who could send or ship samples out of the country was it permitted. Different data platforms and the heterogeneity of phenotype data when each study had to be manually mapped to harmonized variables. Studies were slow to completely clean and analyze data ready for meta-analysis. And the visibility of some data were a concern. Although the data was de-identified and only participant identifiers were used in the harmonization of data, um, some, some sites uh, within the studies had minority populations who were concerned about identification and potential risk. Determining whether or not to include longitudinal data uh, was a question that was raised, and we're still considering how this could be done. Retrospective coding of ethnicity, tribe, and language need to be done. We're hoping that we can apply the ethnolinguistic um, ontology to this respect. Calculated variables had to be done at a study level. The generic script that was developed could not accommodate different scenarios from different studies where multiple fields informed a single harmonized data element. So there were decisions that needed to be made about at what level some data transformation would be done by the study and what we could automate and do as a, in a standardized way across the multiple studies. With regards to prospective data harmonization, where we're recommending harmonized data collection variables and building data standards. Motivation for studies to implement the standards for data collection was low, and they were focused on getting a study off the ground. A number of the studies in the second round of, of, of funding cycle were enthusiastic about taking up the standards, but studies that are already halfway through data collection found this difficult. The benefits were not immediately apparent as they often relate to downstream meta-analysis projects. Obtaining study series templates and identifying what st data studies actually collect can take a lot of time. Use of different data collection platforms, infrastructure environments in multiple African countries mean applying a single standard is difficult. The diversity in Africa made formatting and methods of data collection difficult to agree on and apply. Different cultures, languages, and governing structures affect how clinical data is collected in Africa. A number of predefined phenotype data standards already in existence 
did not align with availability of data in African countries and the formatting of participant questions, such as asking environmental exposure questions to someone in a rural area of Africa in regards to what temperature they set their washing machine to and washing clothes is nonsensical when they're very unlikely to have electricity, let alone a washing machine. It is difficult to assess how successful a standard is until applied. Data has been collected and meta-analysis across multiple standard users are applied. This takes time and often results in version changes to standards over extended time as feedback slowly trickles in. Lessons have been learnt as a result and best practices and phenotype harmonization are beginning to take shape. Make sure your clinical data managers and database developers are aware of the FAIR principles and current phenotype data standards available. Communicate and get involved in other efforts building phenotype standards, such as GA4GH PIN Pheno Workstream, the Phoenix Toolkit Standards, Prior HL7, and many more. Acknowledgement of funder requirements and knowing what standards to apply in database development and CRF design before a study starts is important. Provide data collection recommendations along with data dictionaries. Data must be completely clean prior to harmonization and familiarity with consent and data access policies is a must. Consulting with elders and leaders in the location of research is important to building mutual respect and acknowledging the rights of populations in Africa. Including and expanding on collection of machine readable metadata is very important. Addressing any misconceptions about data upfront, implementing fair data practices whenever possible, and keeping abreast of the study status and implementing a feedback process for studies using data collection standards is extremely helpful. I'd like to acknowledge the people uh, who have been working steadfastly in this area of data harmonization. Um, Professor Nicky Mulder, Aya Venkala, Professor Michelle Ramsey, Manoja Akwa, Lyndon Zak, Mamana Biavanga, Tanashi Chikawara, Vicky and Zawara, Nikola Tiffin, and Jeff String, and a number of the, the teams and the people that are part of them. I'm just going to leave you with some African sayings um, which have resounded with me um, over the course of this work in phenotype harmonization. Cross the river in a crowd and the crocodile will not eat you. If you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. A single bracelet does not jingle and a united family eats from the same plate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. So we've got some time for questions. If you'd like to type in the questions into the GoToWebinar panel, um, then we'll go through through them. So there's a couple of questions that were submitted in advance. So we'll start with those, and then that gives you a little bit of time to type your own questions. So one of the questions that um, was submitted was, um, what do you do about missing data um, when you're looking at data harmonization? So this question came up um, when we were working with the CBD working group um, and looking at retrospective data harmonization. Um, some of the studies had not had missing data because they hadn't collected it. Some of them had missing data that was uh, missing an error during the course of the study data collection. Um, and we discussed the need for um, building a standardized way to, to label missing data. Um, and so I think that it's important for um, organizations or consortiums who are working in networks to have a universally agreed missing data terms that they apply in their databases. Um, and at the end of the day, with the, in regards to CVD data, it was agreed that we wouldn't worry about the reasons for data being missing because this was a container for harmonized data. If the data was missing, it was assumed that there was no recourse to retrieve it. Um, and so in terms of the harmonized data container, we just marked all the data that was missing with the option of data unavailable. But in terms of 
recommendations for data standardization and data collection uh, in advance, I highly recommend applying missing data terms that are uniformly applied across um, studies wherever possible. Okay, thank you. And, and slightly related to that, there's also a question about the cleanliness of the data for data harmonization. So um, when we when we held uh, the workshop for harmonizing the data that had already been collected, uh, it was made very clear to the studies that they needed to bring with them um, their data that had been completely cleaned. Um, and so they brought with them their data that they believed was uh, clean and uh, ready for transformation. But during the course of the workshop, we often came up with questions that identified um, that some fields needed further cleaning. Often there were fields that had um, other options in them where they had collected um, data that wasn't um, prescribed or categorized, and it was discovered that further categorization of data could be carried out. So um, it, it informed those data managers as well, and it was a good experience for everybody to know that when it comes to harmonizing data, you need to have thoroughly reviewed your data and, um, and, and um, categorized and refined it and cleaned it to the tip-top shape before you um, do any kind of harmonization. We did not want to have um, projects having to retransform data and uploading multiple versions of the same data um, as they were still continuing cleaning processes. So it does mean that you, you have to wait till a project is ready with their data um, unless you have planned in advance for some kind of harmonization process where uh, you have agreed on um, certain time points of data uploads. Okay, thank you very much. Um, another question is, how do you determine what ontologies to map the standardized phenotypes to? Um, we've had some discussion about this, um, whether we should um, narrow down the number of ontologies that we apply to our phenotype data, especially when it comes to the building of recommended data standards. Um, but the approach that we've taken is to um, select multiple ontologies to reference, and we have not restricted uh, the referencing and mapping of ontologies to the different data variables. So if we find that a data variable exists in a number of ontologies that are applicable in our research field, we've mapped all of them to that variable. So this is the um, last webinar for this year, and we'll be picking up uh, quite early again next year. So we've got our next Seneca webinar on the 24th of January. Um, a registration isn't open yet, but it should be open by the end of the week. We actually got the title through today. So the title is Ethical, Legal and Societal Issues in International Data Sharing. So we hope you're able to join us for that webinar as well. And then what I'd still like to do is thank Catherine very much for her presentation and thank you all for coming.